you could not have foreseen a situation where all the national team, like under 17 women, women team, hockey uh, team, national boxing, boxers and so forth, will all qualify in their various uh, competitions. So how else are you going to carry out that expenditure? You have to look elsewhere for the expenditure. And normally government overspends. The minority also argues it has not been furnished with documents of the total expenditure by the ministry. Not a single document has been produced <laughs> to support that claim. Understand? Because we asked for certain relevant documents. I mean, those enterprises they dealt with, individuals they engaged, beneficiaries and all those things, that at least some detail work of how that money was spent should be given to the committee. As they speak now, not a single paper, not a single document to support that expenditure has been provided. So that is our concern. The chairman of the Youth and Sports Committee, Kobina Mensa Woyomi, believes this issue is being politicized. Where it is taken out of context and politicized, that is where I have a little challenge. That um, um, it's not peculiar with this government alone. It's been something that has been happening, you know, and because some governments would face challenges of paying people who have actually worked and through fault, through no fault of theirs, uh, they, 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 they are punished unduly for not paying them. That is a, a difficult. Still in the House, nine deputy regional ministers designate who were vetted last week were approved pending the president's confirmation. The House is expected to rise tomorrow. Microsoft founder Bill Gates has commended Ghana for work done so far in the area of immunization. The world's second richest man is in the country to follow projects funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which he co-chairs. At a meeting with President Mahama at the Flagstaff House today, he announced the foundation is considering extending assistance to Ghana in the area of agriculture and sanitation. Bill Gates said he is impressed with work done on immunization of children so far. This is uh, my first trip to Ghana. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, I came particularly uh, to learn about the Ghanaian health system and the great work it does in immunizing the children and uh, the use of data and training people very well. Uh, that health area is the, the primary focus of our foundation and the, the great work here is a uh, inspiration to us, uh, something we want to uh, help to support and also learn how we can duplicate the good work in other areas. Uh, I also, um, we support work in agriculture, uh, sanitation, and a number of other areas that I'm sure my trip here will help uh, inform me about how we can be a, a good partner to the country of Ghana. So. Conceding that Ghana may miss the MDG on sanitation, President Mahama said various interventions are being put in place to prevent the situation from getting out of hand. Um, for us, one of the major areas in which uh, this help you know, stands out is in the area of public health especially in the fight against HIV, AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis. The area of MDGs, um, yes, we're getting quite good support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and uh, in the school feeding program, you know, you have supported that. That has helped to improve nutrition of children at the rural level, especially in underprivileged communities. I'm sure there are many other areas we can uh, uh, cooperate, especially in the area of maternal mortality. We are, you know, uh, quite behind in maternal mortality. We've come out with an accelerated framework to try and speed up, you know, our work on maternal mortality. I'm sure that your first visit to Ghana will be a successful one and that you'll come back again. He commended the Gates Foundation for their roles in the fight against malaria and education through the school feeding program. Bill Gates arrived in the country yesterday for a two-day visit. Country representative for the UN, Ruby Sandor Rajon, was also at the presidency with the Western Central African Regional Rep of the UN Office on Drug and Crime, Pierre Lapac. They announced the launch of a national integrated program next month to fight transnational organized crime and help strengthen the criminal justice system in Ghana. Gifty Ando Apia, Joy News, Flagstaff House. 
The outgoing Apostolic Nuncio to Ghana, Archbishop Leon Kalenga, is urging Ghana not to lose focus on education, democracy and stability. This was the Vatican representative's farewell message to President John Mahama. The President on his part assured him the appropriate atmosphere would be maintained to further partnerships between government and the church. The Congolese Archbishop, who has been in the country for five years, will be representing the Vatican in El Salvador. I uh, instruct all my bishops to continue building schools. I am convinced that through good education, Africa will change. I ask uh, all parents to put children back to school. No child should uh, stay at home. We have that obligation to show the way all the time. Democracy and stability and peace, those qualities are for us uh, eternal. President Mahama attributed the stability partly to wise counsel by religious leaders. The good thing about the church is it does not only concentrate on the spiritual well-being of its congregants, but it also looks at the material well-being of both its congregants and the general public in the area of health, in the area of education, in the area of, you know, uh, even f food supply, nutrition, food security, and so many other uh, uh, things the Catholic Church uh, does. And so government wants to continue to partner with the church. The Indian High Commissioner, also bowing out after two years, recapped India's contribution to Ghana's development. The uh, government of India is very keen to invest $1.2 billion in the fertilizer plant. A delegation is coming uh, in the second of, week of uh, April. Uh, President's pet project, tomato project, has been approved. Uh, $30 million of uh, lines of credit have recently been approved, and some queries have come. Three districts have been chosen, Wa, Yendi, and the mango. Sugar plant for $35 million, it is already underway. Tenders have been floated, evaluations are going on. Uh, I have been pushing through the fisheries project for $7.4 million with the former Greek minister. President Mahama thanks the Indian government, especially for the over $1 billion fertilizer processing plant and for helping to revamp the Commander Sugar Factory. The final farewell message at the presidency was from the country representative of UNICEF, Iyabode Olusanmi, noting the progress Ghana has made in the fight against malaria. She was quick to add, however, that governments should improve upon social intervention programs to protect the poor, given that increases in fuel prices will adversely affect them. We want to mention the issue of water and sanitation. Water, we have done a lot. Open defecation is still a big problem which we need to be addressing. And we would like Ghana to show examples to other countries as how we can implement this effectively. And uh, we are happy that um, this, uh, the leap is going to be expanded to 150,000 families in I mean, households in 2013. We are hoping that the money from, that we realize from the removal of oil subsidies will be used and targeted in uh, you know, social protection issues, expanding to maybe a, perhaps a million households in 2014. Again, the president assured the Ministry of Social Protection was specifically to deal with these challenges. Teachers in the public, <coughs> sorry, teachers in the public sector are expected to return to the classrooms tomorrow after officially suspending their strike over unpaid allowances and other conditions of service. At the Joint News Conference today, the various teacher unions announced they suspended the industrial action pending negotiations with the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission and government. Based on the assurances given by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, the many appeals from many quarters, which we believe will serve as our witnesses in the future, as well as the future of our own peoples and students, we are suspending the strike action to enable negotiations continue. The news conference comes after days of negotiations with the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, President John Mahama, and other stakeholders. According to the National President of NAT, Samuel Do Alobia, 
they have been assured most of their concerns, including their vehicle maintenance allowance and annual incremental arrears, will be paid immediately. As agents of change and examples to society, do not want to be seen as too unyielding to pleas coming from all quarters, including Christian Council, Muslim Council, Catholic Bishops Conference, Parent Teacher Associations, other civil society organizations, NGOs, our own peoples and students, and especially His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana. According to them, their decision to resume their duty tomorrow is a collective decision by the Ghana National Association of Teachers, National Association of Graduate Teachers, and Coalition of Consent Teachers. Waste disposed of by health facilities incre is increasingly accounting for more of the trash generated in Accra with implications for scavengers at the city's dump sites. This was revealed by the chief executive of waste management firm Zoom Lion when the mayor of the Turkey city of Samsung toured the Accra compost and recycling plant today. The Turkish mayor also pledged to support the AMA better manage the city's wastes. Tanks of medical waste are generated daily from the country's hospitals, clinics and pharmacies. These clinical wastes are often dumped together with general waste, raising fears among environmentalists of a possible transmission of infectious diseases. The situation, however, appears to be getting more complicated as healthcare facilities are now resorting to the use of disposable materials. During a tour of the Accra Composite and Recycling Plant, Chief Executive of Waste Management Company Zoom Lion, Dr. Joseph Sian, told the mayor of Samsung his outfit and the AMA are ready to partner investors from Turkey to properly handle medical and electronic waste in the country. We're going to partner them on technical expertise that some of the people will come from Turkey to Ghana and then some, also of, some of the Ghanaians also will go there. Then we exchange the technical know-how, the experience in establishing plant and processing areas for the medical waste and as well as the electronic waste. Uh, Turkish, uh, the Turkish is very, very advanced in this area and I think that we can see how best we can collaborate with them uh, to develop this. And we are very happy of their visit that they have made. The mayor of Samsung was pleased with the amount of work done at the composite plant and expressed his desire to partner the AMA in dealing with the waste in the capital. Çünkü şehirdeki toplama sistemi gördüğüm kadarıyla henüz daha bir sisteme bağlı çözmüş olur. For the time that we will help them and for the things that they will learn, because of them Accra will be a cleaner city and uh, solid waste management is one of the most important thing for municipalities because uh, health of the prob health of the people is the most important thing that we have to take care of. After uh, our cooperation, uh, I, I believe they will learn more things, and Accra and Ghana will be a, a country, a city that will be grown. Currently, 60% of some 3,000 tons of solid waste generated in the capital city daily is collected by Zoom Lion. But officials at the composite plant say they will set up 275 mini recycling plants across the capital by the end of June this year to cater for the remaining 40% of waste left in the city. The news returns after the short break. Government is working on a policy that will make it illegal for its agencies to use wood acquired from questionable sources. The policy will also ensure only certified timber is used in the execution of state-funded projects. The draft policy, which is expected to be presented to Cabinet soon, is targeted at chainsaw operators whose activities are destroying the country's forest reserves. <laughs> Illegal chainsaw operations and other forms of illegal timber harvesting have proven to be destructive and unsustainable and largely responsible for a dissipation of the country's forest reserves. A Timber Resources Management Act 1997, Act 547, bans the trade and use of illegal chainsaw lumber, but over 80% of timber traded on the domestic market is said to be from these illegal sources. The draft public procurement policy is, however, hoping to cap the trade in illegal wood. Timber to be exported to the European market will have to come from legal sources. 
timber for public projects because of the dominant presence of government in the construction or the delivery of infrastructure who requires the use of wood would must come from legal sources when you do that you narrow the market and even if they are still operating are still bent on 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 flouting the law the market will be too, so restricted that the business will not become profitable to abandon it themselves Stakeholders in the timber industry met in Accra to finalize work on the draft policy document and support its implementation. Minister for Water Resources, Works and Housing, Alhaji Collins Dauda at the workshop, pledged his support to push the policy through at cabinet level and emphasized the need to certify legal wood and its source when implementing the policy. One of the challenges that the workshop has been looking at is how we ourselves can certify wood that is going to be used by a contractor A as legal wood. That, for me, is a big challenge. How are we going to do it? Are we going to identify some sawmills, certify them, and give the sawmills? If we identify them, what will be their source of raw materials? The policy will also promote trade in legal wood and ensure that timber products used for public purposes are from authorized and sustainable sources. Are we taking a break? Are there more stories after this? Now, the latest suspect arrested in connection with the murder of the 13-year-old boy at Ibuakwa in the Ashanti region has confessed to murdering the deceased. Akwesi Ajay Ibrahim, according to the police, killed the boy because his mother, Felicity Opoku, owes him 350 Ghana CDs. Akwesi later told journalists to read Mark chapter 13, verses 12, and Genesis chapter 15, verses 15, to understand his reasoning. He is currently in police custody. Next up, we're bringing you business news. The Ghana Meteorological Agency is considering court action to retrieve over 2 million cities audit by the Ghana Airport Company. The service, however, says it will not withdraw its services to the Kutuka International Airport. The airport would have had to shut down. But Director General of the Ghana Met Agency said they have decided against that because of its far-reaching implications. The Executive Secretary of the Energy Commission says additional electricity generation sources would have to be explored if the country is to overcome the current challenges in the sector, warning a resumption of supply by the West African gas pipeline will not entirely solve the problem. Dr. Fuswa Inkra was speaking at a seminar on private-public partnership in the sector, which brought together mainly private sector players in electricity generation in Accra. Chief Executive of the Energy Commission, Dr. Ahinkra, told Joy News the issue of the West Africa gas supply from Nigeria, when resolved, will only solve the energy crisis temporarily. If the Bui power plants start operation, the immediate problem will be solved. But for the future, I'm talking of two years from now um, and beyond, we need more power plants to come in. One of our biggest problems is also fuel. We are using light crude oil, which is very expensive. So in the medium term, we need more uh, gas. Nigerian gas, when the pipeline is restored, hopefully in, in the next one month or so, uh, we will have gas to run uh, the Asogli plant and some of the other thermal power plants. But for sustainable um, co uh, cost or for, for affordable uh, electricity, we need more gas. He said there is the need for additional generation sources if the problem is to be fully contained. There's some shine, yes, that's true. But then um, for um, our current 
uh, state, you need more um, electricity at night than during the day. So we have to combine both uh, the renewable and uh, the, uh, the thermal. So we, they have to complement each other. You cannot rely on uh, the renewable um, just because it, the sunshine is ab in abundance. It's not available at night. Wind is available some time of the day, some time of the, of the season. It's not always available. So we have to combine uh, both renewable and uh, uh, thermal energy. So what is the current... Even though the independent power producers say they are happy with the government's intervention, they say payment for services provided has not been forthcoming. A representative of the IPP says even though electricity tariffs are bound to go up with the involvement of more private sector players, the quality of service will be more efficient. People should not be afraid of the fact that when private sector comes in, then the prices are going to go up. I think the cost of not having power or the cost of very expensive power with diesel generators far outweighs the tariffs and the costs that would, would come along if private sector were generating or were building the power plants uh, for the country. An IPP consortium was launched. The Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Al Haji Yunusuf Husseini, says he has begun consultations in the mining sector that will result in the adoption of a comprehensive and well coordinated strategy to deal with the Galamsey menace. He tells Joy News' Abigail Adumako Inchi he has so far obtained very valuable insight from the stakeholders he's engaged on how to root out the problem. What we are doing presently, last week you have heard that the National Security Tax Force on the Lands and Natural Resources had arrested a number of foreigners, seized their equipment, and had brought them to Accra for prosecution and possible uh, deportation. Now, what we are doing presently this afternoon, we'll be having a broader stakeholder meeting of the Ministry of Interior, Defence, Information, Foreign Affairs, Local Government and Rural Development, Chief Tansi, Environment, Science and Technology and Innovation, uh, the National Security Coordinator and the Minerals Commission to look at ways, to, I mean, ways at coordinating our activities to devise a comprehensive uh, approach to dealing with Galamse. Afternoon, we'll be dealing with, we'll be meeting the, a delegation from China who are quite concerned about the negative publicity their country is getting on Galamse. Yesterday, I was at the at Kumasi to address the Ghana Chamber of Mines, and I told them that it is totally unacceptable for small, uh, large scale concession owners to give out their lands for illegal operations. And any large scale concession owner found will be dealt with punitively. Shareholders of SGSSV have given approval to its board to change the bank's name to Societe General Ghana. The approval was secured at the bank's annual general meeting at the Accra International Conference Centre today. The move, the bank explains, is to reflect the strong brand name of the global bank, that is Societe General. The approval, however, came with some serious concerns from some shareholders. And then the Ghana National Gas Company says 60% of work on the gas infrastructure project is complete. The $700 million project started in 2011 and was expected to be completed in a year. Officials of the company have blamed their inability to meet this timeline and government's failure to meet some financial obligations in good time. Finance Director at the Ghana Gas Company, Baliru Kasim Bukhari, tells Joy Business work is progressing at a good pace. The project, when completed, will provide gas for power generation as well as domestic purposes. Protesters have marched near the presidential palace in Cyprus as questions over the bailout package for the financially crippled island Lenga with the resignation of the chairman of the country's... <laughs>
Okay, so it turned out that in sports today, we were very, very lucky. Uh, our qualification to the African Youth Championship and the World Cup uh, had to come down to uh, penalty shooter. Penalty shooter. That's right. Fortunately, this time, we managed to make I, it. I like it when you say this time because we've <laughs> suffered so many times. That happens to be the case. When it gets to the penalty, I mean, then we know we're that we're in big trouble. But today, it worked for the boys. Um, I have to say, a bit of hard luck was in there for the Malians. They played very well. But they, our boys managed to endure, and they are in the final. And it just sends out to that, uh, you know, the coach, coach Celeste Celeste Celeste. Bobo. I don't know where the magic is. Yeah. In 2009, he took the team to Rwanda and then took them to the World Cup as well. And then again, he seems to be doing that. Okay, so George has the details coming up. Sports is brought to you in association with... Right, now, Ghana ended Mali's hopes of reaching the 2013 African Youth Championship final, handing their fellow West Africans a 4-2 defeat on post-match penalties after the semi-final match ended in a stalemate at the Ahmed Zabano Stadium in Iran this evening. Both sides failed to score after extra time, and the dreaded penalty shootout was all that stood between the teams and the final. Can Francis Nair put Ghana ahead? Francis Nair straight at your ring goal. That's a good save. Didn't have far to die so hard. He hasn't managed to score in Algeria. Samba Diallo. Yes, he can, but only just. Good penalty. Good height for the goalkeeper, but tight netting. Can he do what Nar couldn't? Tarkor full. Yes, he can. Wonderful penalty into the top corner. Damiani. And it's been saved. Good save from Eric Antwi. Corner, but here's Antwi. Wonderful save from Antwi. Tama, calmly taken. Made exactly the same dive for all three penalties. Ghana, edge ahead. And again, the penalty is a good height, but again, it's good. Samaki. Right into this. Ghana. And Larty wins that battle in the same side. Well, three of the four penalty takers have been the defenders. Jeremiah Arkerfield, Ahmed Atama and Lawrence. Mariko. And it's saved! What a wonderful save! Still had to make this. And Yuringo absolutely needs to stop this. Nakatia against Yuringo. And Nakatia scores. And Ghana are in the final. Mali denied on penalties. Glory be to God, says the shard of Richmond Nakatia. Well, they thank God for the World Cup win in 2009. All right, so uh, congratulations to Satellites. And the Balians will play defending champions Nigeria, who lost 2-0 to Egypt in the third place playoff. And Ghana will meet Egypt in Saturday's final in Iran. Let's do some bid on the MTN FA Cup because there are exciting fixtures out there. The draw for the round of 16 of the competition was completed earlier today and threw up a couple of interesting, exciting fixtures out there. And of course, there are great, great, great games, including Brickham Chelsea and Temer Youth, Mediama SC as well. Premier League leaders Mediama Sporting Club have been drawn against 2011 MTN FA Cup semi finalist Brickham Chelsea in a math authoring clash in Takwa. Brickham Chelsea currently lies second on the league log, two points behind Mediama, and this promises to be a match that will prepare both teams for the title run in. In another all Premier League clash, Tema Youth would face 2010 Premier League champions Adriana Stars in Tema. Wiles 1960 FA Cup champions 11 Whites would face 2011 MTN FA Cup holders Nanya Football Club in 2nd D. Record holders Accra Heart of Oak will welcome Division 1 outfit Stark FC in Accra, whilst the winners of the outstanding round of 32 clash between Aguzuma Weavers and Kumasi Asante Kotoko would face newly promoted Division 1 side Rainbow Stars. Heart of Lions will face Mighty Jets in Pando, whilst 2012 finalist Ashgold will travel to Bibini to face Gold Stars in a battle of gold. And Bidaya's professionals will square up with Guan United and Tema. The matches will take place from the 5th to the 9th of April 2013. All right, that'll be all for sports tonight. My name is George Adi Jr. Israelai will join us with Showbiz in a bit. Have a good night. Sports was brought to you in association. Right, when we say you're making a fashion statement, it means just that, that your clothes 
uh, and other fashion accessories you use are making a statement about your personality. But apart from your clothes, your shoes also convey a thing but useful slice of information about your personality. You are what you wear, says an old adage, and so generally, people are advised to dress to suit whatever occasion they may be attending. There is also another saying that glory not found on the face can be seen on one's feet. It is in line with this saying that a young Ghanaian entrepreneur, Tony Senaya, has ventured into the manufacturing of shoes under the brand name Horseman Shoes. According to Tony, Horseman Shoes aims at providing quality, affordable and durable shoes with a futuristic touch to patrons. When you hear the animal horse, what features of it come to mind? They are strong, they have strength. Um, they run fast, they have stamina. That is what my brand represents. Okay, so I want the young people who are determined to reach a goal in life to be determined to have stamina to complete the race. The 2013 Husband Shoe Collection was recently launched at the African Regent Hotel in Accra, where its brand icon, Ochiame Kwame, was also unveiled. You know how I feel about my Ghana made stuff. I'm really, really passionate about the fact that it's proudly African and it's beautiful, it's exquisite. I've been wearing this very once for like five months. I wear it every day, but it's still st strong. Strangers can tell a lot about you just by checking out your footwear. At least, that is according to researchers from the University of Kansas and Wellesley College. We found out from some of the patrons at the launch what about shoes tickle their fancy. I don't really have a preference, but if I look at it and it's it's made of a quality material, I'll go for it. You know, we have this synthetic and then we have the real leather, so I always look out for the leather, leather ones, the proper ones. I don't have a particular type of shoe that I like, but anything that uh, is nice, I go for. I like fashion, I like shoes, I like bags. I like clothing too, but I think I prefer the shoes and the bags for now. And that is as a starter, that's where I wanted to start from, yes. Okay. So you want to see uh, my shoes? Maybe another time, but in other showbiz news, the producer and songwriter behind songs including the Jackson 5's first three number one hits, Dick Richards, has died at the age of 68. So time now for some of the comments you've posted on our Facebook wall. And uh, so I'm going to the wall. We're starting with uh, uh, acidity. Samuel, he says, teachers are most welcome back. Uh, main awareness, I can't... Uh, Okay, it's Sufu Nuruddin. Thanks to the great teachers of this country, the, can, the government should do well to meet their demands. And uh, Tahiru Al Hassan says Bill Gates should consider supporting the villages and small towns' water supply. Kofia Samwa says, Feel pity for Ghana teachers as usual. Appeals, appeals upon appeals, send them back to the classrooms without anything. Teachers who go to school without, go to school thinking of how to submit their. Uh, supplement their income than anything. Hmm. Quality education indeed. And then uh, I'll end with Akutu Jacobs' breakthrough. Watson says, so the teachers are just waiting for the president to appeal to them before they can call off the strike. This is really blackmail. Those are your comments and you can continue to send in your comments onto Facebook. That's it. For the bulletin before though, go the quick run through our top stories. The minority in parliament has slammed government for massive overspending of the youth and sports ministry. Microsoft founder Bill Gates has commended Ghana for work done so far in the area of immunization and says its foundation will consider extending support to other areas. Teachers in the public sector are expected to return to the classrooms tomorrow after officially suspending their week-long strike of unpaid allowances and other conditions of service. And the Executive Secretary of 